Hey everyone, it's Suzanne Kohlberg. And today I'm gonna to talk about why calories don't matter for lasting weight loss. And before I begin, I know there's people who are gonna argue with me from the outset. So I was very specific, I managed to say it, specific with the title of this video, why calories don't matter for lasting weight loss. If you're wanting to lose weight for a wedge shred or a reunion or you know some bullshit 12 week challenge, calories matter a lot. But how many times have we gone on said diet, wed shred, bullshit, bullshit challenge, lost some weight, felt shit hot, then gained it all back plus interest? Like this video is for the people who are done with that cycle, done looking for the thing. If you want to read about 30 years of looking for the thing, my book, Beginning is Shit, an unapologetic weight loss memoir, I talk about Weight Watchers, 12 WBT, Body Trim, Fat Camp, CSIRO Diet. I didn't even list half of the things I did because the book became very redundant. Skinny Fire, Fiber, Juicy Plus, Plexus Slim, like you fucking name it, and I have tried it. And for those things, calories matter a lot. And then what happens is you stop doing it. You stop drinking the skinny pink drink or choking down those horrible tablets or whatever, and then you're like, there's something wrong with me. This, I, I can't do this. I can't stick to this. So the diet, like Weight Watchers or 12 WBT, it's amazing. When I do it, I lose weight. But I'm the fat, lazy fuck who can't keep it up. There is something inherently wrong with this because if any of these things truly worked, we wouldn't have a vestige of you know dozens of things we've tried and failed. And we wouldn't have all this baggage and drama about what's inherently wrong with us because we can't stick to it. So what I'm talking about today is why calories or counting calories matter little for lasting weight loss. Because the thing is, if you think of the body as a car, as a vehicle, and food or calories as fuel, the body will run on a lot. So if you give it shitty food, it will still run. Um, so I'm thinking, like, what do you think with the unleaded petrol? There's like 98, which is like, you know, the pure one or whatever, and 95 and 91. So if eating well and sticking to your calorie budget is the 98 and then eating crap is the 91, whichever way your body is still going to move, it functions better with higher quality fuel, but it still functions either way. And you'll be like, what the hell has this got to do with weight loss, Suze? Well, if your car has all four tires slashed, it ain't going nowhere. It is stuck, dead in the ground, dead in the middle of the highway, all the other cars are going past and you are going nowhere. And then you're like, hmm, maybe I need a better quality fuel. Your thoughts and your feelings about yourself, about your weight are the tires that prop up your car. Your mindset is the tires. And if you're thinking, if you start a diet and you're already dreaming about the binge that you're going to have at the end, or if you're already telling yourself, I just need to smell McDonald's and I gain a kilo, or I just need to see chocolate and I gain weight. If these are the thoughts that are running rampant in your head, you're going to go nowhere. So the work for lasting weight loss isn't about what fuel you give your body because that matters very little. And that becomes a lot easier to fuel yourself better when you have better feeling thoughts. The fuel is how to patch, repair, replace each of your tires so that you can look at your mindset and why you think that this isn't going to last and why you think there's something inherently wrong with you and why you think it's in your genes or it's your parents' fault or you know it's somebody else, it's your husband's fault for bringing home the chocolate. Because at the end of the day, there's no passive eating like there is passive smoking. You choose what you eat and what you don't eat, unless you're in hospital and hooked up to a drip, but then you wouldn't be looking at weight loss then, would you? So it's not to get down on yourself and beat yourself up and shame yourself because that leads on a one-way ticket to binge town. It's like, what am I truly hungry for? Why am I? Like I was having a discussion yesterday with my coach about how I really wanted chips. Like I wanted chips so bad. And I didn't want to take responsibility for wanting the chips. So I said to my husband, let's go out for lunch because I knew where he'd suggest. And then I could absolve myself of the responsibility and put it onto him. It's his fault. He said we should go get KFC. That is one of my tires that is really kind of wobbly and half deflated at the moment. So how do you take responsibility for your decisions? And I believe that is best done in a group 
of supportive people, a group of people who are walking this path, a group of people who understand this concept and aren't going to say, is it better to have kale or spinach? Or is it better to have an apple or a banana? Or the fucking fructose in inflation of whatever. Like that is fueling of the vehicle, which as I said, is useless if your tires are all flat. So I've got this image because I know some of you are visual learners. So hopefully it will let me share screen, Let's see how we go. And I believe lasting transformation is very much like an iceberg. We've all done the short-term things when we're over it, overweight, overeating, overindulging, just over ourselves, over that number on the scales, over that our fat pants don't fit. And we're like, oh shit, I need to change my habits. So we jump on a 12 week challenge or a 10 week challenge, or we go back to Weight Watchers for the umpteenth time and we change our habits. And for a short period of time, we have some outer transformation. When we get to the point where our fat pants are back in the fat pant pile, or we've reached that number on the scale, we're like fucking huzzah. And then we go back and we yo-yo in this place above the water for months, years, decades even. And I would like you to think about this as you've reached your over it point. So you're like, I need to do something. So you grab your beach ball and you shove it under the water and you force yourself to eat kale and drink smoothies and run. And at, at first it's easy because you've got the mindset. You're like, this is going to be it. But after a while, your arms get really shaky. Have you ever tried holding a ball underwater? Eventually your arms give out. The ball, the ball comes up and smashes you in the face, water up your nose, you're bigger than ever, and you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. If you get nothing else from this video, there is nothing wrong with you. The thing is, you're not going about it in the right way. You're changing the fuel in your vehicle from 98 to 91, which makes the vehicle run a little bit better for a little period of time. But because your tires are all bloody slashed, you're still not going very far. The mindset and the void is the stuff underneath the surface. Why am I eating when I'm not hungry? Why am I falling back into these bad habits? What is like, why do I feel that I have to be good or bad? What am I absolving myself of in this moment, eating this food, having this instant gratification that I'm going to have to pay for later? It's like when you have, you put something on a credit card. It's like, yeah, I've got it. Oh shit, I've got all this interest. This is the negative compound interest of your choices. Why, um, what, what's really going on? What's deeper here? What am I avoiding? And one of the biggest ones is why am I more comfortable feeling guilt and shame than feeling whatever else it is that's going on? Because often we have a feeling that we don't want to face, fear, um, so many others, and we can't handle that Re anger resentment, seeding resentment at somebody else. Oh my goodness, I can't handle my resentment. So I'm going to eat because then I'll feel guilty. And that's very inwardly directed. It's much easier to feel guilty at myself than to deal with any resentment or anger towards anybody else. And that's why this is the inner transformation. And when you have all your tires on the road, it's much smoother to change out your fuel. And I believe this is done in a supportive resonant community. And that's why I have the Why Wait program. We run it four times a year. And most people go, oh, yeah, yeah, Suze, I'll join next round. Yeah, yeah. And we've just started the January round and it's going freaking gangbusters. And I've just opened up the enrollment for the April round. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, I'll wait till it gets closer. I'll wait. And then when April comes, oh, I'll wait till August. I'll wait. There's a reason the program is called Why Wait. What are you waiting for? What's going to happen in the next two months, three months? Like, imagine... People will be like, oh, I don't want to pay for it now. It doesn't start till April. If you're going to go on a holiday, you would buy your tickets, you would pay for your accommodation, you would set it up so you knew when the holiday time rolled around, I'm set. I've just got to pack my suitcase. So if you're thinking, oh, will I, won't I, I really encourage you, sign up for the April round today, jump in. I will send you a little surprise thing to kind of get you started, get the wheels turning easy, gentle. It's not a go hard or go home program. We've all done those and they end up freaking one way ticket to binge town. It's the deep stuff. And you can make the commitment to get started on that today. You don't need to wait. And, you know, let's let go of this calorie bullshit and look at what's really happening. Hope that's been helpful. If you've got any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.